So here's a nice ILD case. So in this patient, we see basal predominant patchy consolidation within the lungs. And so I think I've seen people sort of just discount pulmonary opacity as being nonspecific and just moving on, giving simple differential diagnoses of aspiration or pneumonia. And so I think in a lot of situations, yeah, it's uh, white stuff in the lungs and it can be difficult to figure out exactly what the etiology is. And obviously clinical correlation is very helpful. But in certain situations like this, especially when it's bilateral and, and generally symmetric, you can be a little bit more specific. This is a pretty good look for organizing pneumonia. So everyone knows about the reverse halo sign, also known as the atoll sign in the setting of reverse halo. But something that people don't really talk about is this pattern. This has been described in the literature, perilobular consolidation, particularly at the lung bases. And so we think about this when we see this pattern of consolidation, which almost look like they are organizing themselves, uh, forgive the pun, around the edges of polygons or arcades, like for example, like here and here, and I think better seen actually on the contralateral lung, these areas of perilobular consolidation. So these are the secondary pulmonary lobules, and we see consolidation around the margins of these secondary pulmonary lobules. When you see this at the lung bases, it's generally specific for organizing pneumonia, or at least suggestive of it. I don't know of any studies which have looked at the sensitivity and specificity of this imaging finding, but it has been described as an association. This patient has a history of dermatomyositis, which we know is strongly associated with organizing pneumonia. So don't forget about this perilobular pattern of consolidation. Also, I'd just like to talk a little bit about nomenclature. I think a lot of times when people discuss organizing pneumonia, there's a tendency to call all organizing pneumonia cryptogenic organizing pneumonia. I think it's important to remember that when you use that term cryptogenic organizing pneumonia, you're literally saying that that organizing pneumonia has no known cause. If you look at the literature, it seems like a slight majority, around 60% of patients with organized pneumonia have a known cause for their organizing pneumonia, which implies that only 40% of cases of organized pneumonia are cryptogenic. So I think that's important to realize that there is that distinction in regards to the terminology. Probably all cases of cryptogenic organized pneumonia are due to something. It's just that at this point, we don't know what that is. For those of you guys who don't know where the perilobular organized pneumonia literature came from or, or where it was first described, to my knowledge, I, I believe this is the first paper describing this perilobular consolidation pattern. This was in radiology way back in 2004. Authors here. Senior author, obviously very well known, Dr. David Hansel. A small series, but has been described again in the literature 